In less than a month, British voters will make a potentially historic choice. Leave the European Union, the economic and political partnership with 27 other nations, or stay put. The EU was set up shortly after World War II with the idea to promote trade among the nations and keep them from going to war again. But a lot has changed since then. And these days, many people feel the EU is holding Britain back with too many rules on businesses, too much money in EU membership fees, about 13 billion pounds or 19 billion US dollars last year alone. And a lot of people are concerned about the border security issues the partnership brings. Others feel the benefits outweigh the problems and Britain should keep the status quo. Among them are Britain's Prime Minister and Susie Kitchens, Britain's Consul General to Boston. Consul General, it's so good to see you. Thank you very much. So billions of pounds in fees, it's not dispute. Open borders, not in dispute. Reduced political autonomy. Why not go this route? It isn't like UK is all of a sudden going to be an irrelevant power. It's still going to be a huge power. Why not? Because we're much stronger if we stay within Europe. Our power is amplified by being part of the European so? Union. Well, for example, we're negotiating the TTIP at the moment. That will be the world's biggest ever trade deal between the two biggest trading blocs. And that will bring enormous economic benefit both to European Union countries and to the US. It will create the standards globally for trade and investment around the world. That's really powerful. But the implication is that, that if you are not in the EU, that you can't be a part of this kind of thing. I mean, it's sort of like saying, well, the US is not part of something, so it's not going to be part of the mix. It's powerful enough, and the UK is powerful enough. I mean, couldn't there be, for example, an amicable divorce? For example, your prime minister did negotiate certain conditions in the hopes that people would vote to stay. You're obviously not going to convert to the euro, a whole variety of things like that. Wouldn't you still have the power to enter these things, maybe not as smoothly, if you weren't there? It's possible, but it's unknown, and that's a risk that my government feels it's not worth taking. So it's unlikely that the other European nations would look particularly favourably upon us if we were to leave, and we're not going to get a deal that's better than what they have being part of the bloc. So it would be a negative if we were to come out. Why do you think there's... Uh, I mean, most polls, you know this better than I, are virtually dead even, at least within the margin of error. If this is such a bad idea, leaving especially when your leaders, I mean, the leader of the country says it's a bad idea. Why are so many uh, people in the UK saying this is the direction we should be going? What are they missing? Well, it is quite complicated, and there are issues around sovereignty and national identity tied up in it. And the British people haven't had a chance to vote on our membership of Europe in 40, 40 years. years right. So they want that chance. Um, and also, it's very difficult to say exactly what will happen. So a lot of people are saying, tell us what it will look like. And actually, nobody can really do that. I mean, the Treasury has put together figures saying that each family would be about £4,000 worse off every year were we to leave, and our GDP might take a hit of 6%. But that's economic modelling, and it's not uh, very easy to really reconcile that with people's everyday They're right lives. on the sovereignty issue, though, aren't they? You do give up some of your sovereignty to the U EU, do you not? Um, on some issues, but not on all issues. And we're still very much the UK within Europe. We don't lose our our British identity by being part of the European it Union. It wouldn't damage your security. I mean, NATO is more important in terms of security than the EU, right? Well, we have, uh, we get a lot of benefits in terms of security by being part of the European Union, and there are uh, mechanisms through which we can share information quickly, for example, on air flight passengers. Uh -huh. um, we have Europol, so there are definite benefits to security being within the European How Union. How does the average Brit, regardless of which side they're on, feel about uh, an outsider, the President of the United States, uh, voicing an opinion on this, and obviously Barack Obama said he thinks you should stay in. He mm -hmm. agrees with you and your boss. How do people, I mean, most Americans don't like outsiders telling us what to do. Isn't there possible that could backfire in some ways that people say, we don't need somebody else's president giving us advice about how to vote? Well, it is such a big question that it does affect others outside of the UK, and therefore it's right that others who will be affected speak up on it. And the, the trade relationship, for example, between the US and the EU and Europe is three times as big as it is with the US and Asia. So it's a very important factor for American businesses and people, and therefore it's right they should speak up so about you, you it. So you do subscribe to the notion that the US suffers as well, if it turns out that Britain, the Brits do decide to exit here, yes. yes? You know, one of the things I love about this, I had never heard of the Electoral Commission, which is charged to make sure the campaign is fair. Free mailings, access to free meeting, 
spending limits as opposed to this atrocity of an election here. Is that all British elections or just these ballot kinds of referenda things? No, we have pretty strict limitations on electoral spending. So last year we had had a general election. There are caps on how much the parties can spend. There's limited airtime that they can have for advertisements. And our campaigning is all squashed into a very small time oh frame as God. well. It's nothing like the theatre we enjoy here. Speaking of our uh, the theatre here, here is your boss, David Cameron, debating in the December, whether to ban a particular candidate from coming to uh, Great Britain. Here's uh, David Cameron. I think his remarks are divisive, stupid and wrong. And I think if he came to visit our country, I think he'd unite us all. Uh, uh, he called him stupid. Uh, the new uh, Sadiq Khan, the new mayor of Boston, called Donald Trump ignorant. Mayor about, of London. Uh, mayor of London, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, described him as ignorant, Donald Trump, about Islam. If Donald Trump ends up being president of the United States, what does this mean for the relationship with the UK? Well, the relationship between the American president and the British prime minister is multifaceted and it's very strong and we are convinced that whoever the ultimate candidate will be that is chosen by the American people, we will work closely with them as we always have. Even if he's ignorant and stupid? Well, the prime minister has stood by his comment saying that he thought that particular comment was mm -hmm. wrong and he won't agree with it. But should Mr. Trump be elected by your people, then we will work with him. Consul Susie Kitchens, it's great to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much.